Well, welcome back. We want to take you back to New York City right now, where two additional buses of illegal migrants have arrived in New York City. These two buses have arrived this morning. Uh, so far, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has sent more than 1,500 migrants to New York and 7,200 migrants to Washington, D.C. Of course, the governor of Texas is dealing with some 6,000 to 7,000 illegal migrants a day showing up in Texas through the Rio Grande. Joining me right now is Georgia Congressman Austin Scott. And, Congressman, we've spoken a lot about uh, every state being a border state with a wide-open border. What is your reaction to the border and the drugs coming over? What can be done about it? Look, I've got a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, so this is one of the things that keeps me up at night. The amount of fentanyl that we've seized in this country is enough to wipe out a couple of generations. Now you're seeing it come over uh, from China, trafficked through the cartels, and where, where it looks like a sweet tart. And so uh, the idea that we're not going to have border security in this country, it's a dereliction of duty for those of us who are elected. And you've got these major metropolitan area Democrats that, that represent these they represent these cities where they're now saying they're going to allow people who aren't U.S. citizens to vote. And so I think I think the governor of Texas is doing exactly the right thing. He's he's uh, he, he's he's sending the illegal immigrants to the area that is responsible for the lack of border security. And so if the city of New York is going to allow non-citizens to vote in their elections, then uh, I think the governor's made a good choice in where to send them. Well, what is the motivation here? I mean, why is he allowing all of these people to jump the line? We already have an immigration policy in place. We issue one million green cards a year. Why allow these illegal migrants to jump the line of those people who are doing it legally? Maria, it, it, it is just symbolic of, of how one small segment of the extremely radical left uh, controls this administration. And if you ask the majority of the Democrats that I represent in, in, in Georgia's 8th District, and I think the majority of the Democrats in Georgia would tell you that uh, there should be a, a solution that provides border security, stops the cartels from controlling our border, and at the same time uh, provides a DACA solution. The Democrats don't care about these people. They have never cared about these people. They've had the House, the Senate, and the presidency for two years. They haven't put a DACA solution on the table. They could have done that over the last couple of weeks when they did uh, their inflation uh, act that, that's candidly going to make things worse for people in America. So, so they've, they've made choices. It's all political for them. And, and I, I applaud the governor for his creative uh, stance and doing what he's doing yeah. uh, to, to spread this into uh, the people who are responsible for the illegal immigration, which are uh, those elected representatives who refuse to vote for border security which is necessary to stop the fentanyl from coming in this country, Maria. Yeah, but the progressives, you mentioned the progressives. The progressives also want free stuff. They want free college. They want uh, 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 more money forgiven. The president is bragging about this uh, multi-billion dollar student loan handout. And I've got the Committee for a Responsible Budget saying it's going to cost between 400 and $600 billion. It's adding up to twice as much or more to the deficit as was just eliminated from the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which, of course, was missed named. And, it, and they also say it's going to send tuition prices higher, Congressman. But I guess the question I have for you is, is he going around you and your colleagues? Um, the Wall Street uh, Journal uh, reported yesterday, even Nancy Pelosi a year ago said the president does not have the power to just forgive all of this debt, but he's doing it. He, he, he's absolutely going around Congress. And, and until the Republicans have the House or the Senate, there's nothing to hold uh, the president accountable, because what Nancy Pelosi has done with, uh, you, you know, the proxy voting system, her members are not showing up for committee. If we do have committees, they're not showing up for the floor votes. And I looked at one of the pictures of all of the people standing around clapping when she was signing the, you know, the Inflation Act. And, and I guarantee you, Maria, none of those people in that picture read that piece of legislation. They dropped a 750-page piece of legislation on the Internet, 30 minutes after uh, the CHIPS bill passed, n nobody read that bill. Nobody knew what was in the bill yeah. other than Chuck Schumer and, and, uh, and Sarah Manchin, and yet they all lined up and voted by proxy for it without it ever coming through committee, Maria. 
It's going to increase the cost of fuel yeah. in this country. It's going to increase the cost of living in this country. If you listen to the auto analysts, they're telling us now that they think yeah. the adoption of electric vehicles will, will actually be slowed by this piece of legislation because it, it, wow. it shows significant bias to the more expensive vehicles instead of the less expensive electric vehicles that a lot of you know, middle class Americans want to own and they're going to be priced out of it. Yeah. Well, all the while, they're freezing out fossil fuels. The state of Texas accusing BlackRock, along with nine other European financial groups, of boycotting the fossil fuel industry. They are basically freezing out all financing. Uh, all of this is adding to an economy that is slowing. We are likely in recession. Let's get you Jackie D'Angelo. She's got the latest on GDP. Jackie. Good morning to you, Maria. This is the second preliminary estimate of second quarter GDP coming at a contraction of 0.6%. So this was slightly better uh, than the C seasonally adjusted estimate from Riffin TV, which was a contraction of 0.8%, and it's slightly better than the first read that we got of a contraction of 0.9%. Having said that, you can redefine what you think a recession is. Uh, technical definition is two consecutive quarters of contracting GDP. We still have that first quarter was down 1.6%. So looking at two quarters of GDP decline on this second preliminary estimate, and it's a time, Maria, that many are, are asking as you talk about uh, forgiving student loan debt, the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Is this the right time for the country to be spending when technically we are in a recession? Back to you. Yeah. GDP down six-tenths of a percent. I am talking uh, to you, Congressman, when you look. Thank you so much, Jackie DeAngelis. Congressman, your thoughts on what we're seeing here. Uh, continuing claims are down 19,000 on the week, but the second read of the second quarter GDP confirms that we've got another contraction in the second quarter, uh, down six-tenths of a percent, even if it is better than what the economists were expecting. Yeah, Maria, two things. One is, I'm, I'm a farm boy. We're going to continue to see inflation in food prices because of the cost of diesel, the cost of fertilizer, the cost of all of our inputs there. And I will tell you, uh, a couple of years ago, we had energy independence in the palm of our hands. I think Joe Biden and the Democrats giving that away uh, means that we no longer have control over uh, inflation in our economy anymore. And if OPEC simply reduces output, imagine what that's going to do to the price of a barrel of oil uh, in, this, in this country. And so, so I would much prefer that we as Americans have control of our own destiny, which means we have to have energy independence. And uh, obviously the price of a gallon of diesel uh, go, goes into the price of everything that we buy at the grocery store and certainly... Uh, goes into everything that we grow on the farm. So I'm, I'm very concerned that as we see revisions in these numbers and as we push further out, uh, that it could, could get worse. And if OPEC cuts the price of a barrel of oil and, and Joe Biden should have never given OPEC uh, that much control over our economy, then, then think about what that's going to do to us. And, and just look at what, it did, what he did for Aramco, the largest, most profitable company yeah. in the history of the world is Aramco, and that's because of what Joe Biden did to America's energy independence. Wow. Well, he sold oil to China from the Strategic Oil yep. Reserve. So there's uh, that as well. Congressman, it's good to get your take on all of this. Thanks very much. Austin Scott joining us this morning uh, in Georgia. We'll keep watching, sir, and we'll be right back.